Hello everyone, my name is Winona. I am a grateful believer in Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Excuse me, grateful for just all of the, the victories that he has brought in my life. I am coming to you from Green Valley Lake, California. A little mini vacation in the middle of the week and I'm grateful for that. Um, I wanted to try to get some of the background. I might maybe do another video with that right now. It was just a little too too much glare. And uh, so we're doing it this direction. So I have a nice rock chimney behind us and some cabins and trees in the foreground there. So today we are talking about, you know, we're continuing on in step six and we're talking about loving support. And it includes scripture that is basically the most recognized scripture in the Bible. We're going to be in the book of John and we're going to be reading John 3 verses 14 through 17. So it does include that very famous verse that's in there. But before we get started, I'm going to just lift us up in a word of prayer. Father God, we are grateful for just this day that you've made. Father, I'm thankful that I'm able to be up in these beautiful mountains, just enjoying your nature that you've created. Lord, today as we read about how much you loved us, the gift that you gave us, I just pray that we truly are thankful for this, that we honestly can say thank you to you for this. And so, Father, I just pray for blessings on those watching this video and their families. I just lift them up to you in your son's name. Amen. So in the scripture, it talks about Moses. Um, just give you a little heads up on what it is. It says in verse 14, where John 3, verse 14, it says, Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the, man, the son of man must be lifted up. Now, if you don't know that story, while the Israelites were wandering in the desert, um, they became very rebellious and um, <clears throat> they, God sent a plague of snakes um, to punish them because of their rebellious attitudes that they had. They were being bitten by these snakes, they were dying. The only way that they could be saved um, and be healed would be to obey God's order and that would be to look up at this bronze uh, statue or bronze pole that Moses had created for this very reason. And the same goes for us as children of God. And as our salvation happens, we need to remember to look up, just as the Israelites did to Jesus. Amen. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to get started. Like I said, it's John 3, and I'm reading verses 14 through 17. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that anyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Amen. To save the world through him. But that just shows the love that God has for us, warts and all, he loves us. Amen. And so what I want to do now is read through the devotional. It's the Life Recovery Devotional. And we are step six. I'm reading day 29 and it's called Loving Support. We may find it hard to believe that anyone would want us, really want us, just as we are. It may be especially hard to believe that a holy God would consider us worthy of his love and so much so that he would sacrifice the life of his son to make us his own. That's the stuff of fairy tales and we probably aren't used to thinking of our lives in terms of happily ever after. And yet, God so loved the world so much that he gave his one and only son so that anyone, everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. And of course, that's John 3.16. The Apostle Paul went on to describe a love story that has the power to cleanse and transform the beloved. And in that case, the beloved is us. He wrote, for husbands, this means love your wives, just as Christ loved the church. He gave up his life for her to make her holy and clean, washed by the cleansing of God's word. He did this to present her to himself as a glorious church without a spot or wrinkle or any other blemish. Instead, she would be holy and without fail. That you'll find in Ephesians, it's 5, 25 through 27. When we become ready 
to have God remove all of our defects. Our decision is welcomed by a loving God. He accepts us as we are with nothing hidden from his all-seeing eyes. Baptism symbolizes the burial of our old life and a resurrection to a new one. He will continue his transforming work until every defect is wiped out. So God's involvement with, this, with us is always based on his love for us. Amen. He loves us. He knows what our defects are. He knows exactly what they are. We have to remember that he created us. He loves us so much that he gave us choices, options, and he let us bear the consequences of those choices and those options that we chose. That's how much he loves us. But now he's ready to hear us tell him, Father, I'm ready for you to help me remove these defects. Help me to remove these and help me to replace them with positive things positive things. That's what we've got to remember. When we do remove our defects of character, they didn't happen overnight. They're not going to go away overnight, but we need to fill these things up with godly thoughts, godly actions, godly fellowship, and, and keep ourselves within his realm of godliness. You know, the, the, the defects that we have like I said, they didn't happen overnight, and they did help us get through a lot of hard times in life. That's the way we, we coped with things. But now he is giving us better coping mechanisms. And so we need to be grateful for those, but we have to give up the others. We have to lay them at the cross. We need to give them over to him. We need to let him know we are ready and willing for you to come and help us with this. He's just waiting for us to ask. Hey, you guys have a great day today, and we'll talk at you tomorrow.